Mr. Shaw? Mrs. Gupta. My Anil's starting his new job this morning. Got a smart new company car. Isn't it lovely? Oh, yes. Very nice. Such a proud moment for a mother. Going to make his way in the world. And in a smart new suit. We bought it for him. Well, you got to look the part, haven't you? Yes, of course. Where are you working, Anil? He's an executive with Bartlett's. Oh, he's selling cars. He's an executive, sales executive. He'll be at the front doing all the business. It's a very important job. A lot of people wanted it. Oh, well, good luck with it. Goodbye, Mrs. Gupta. I am going to kill that woman. Such a proud moment for a mother. <laughs> Tarika, are you getting up? Some juice. You do look a bit pale, actually. Just feel a bit under the weather, that's all. All this business is making you ill, George. You know, Ronnie can't continue to stop me seeing Bracken. He's using her like some sort of emotional shield. I'm gonna have to say something to him. I don't want to antagonise him. Enough to talk to me about, shall I? Yeah, maybe. But you know, you you do have the right to see your own daughter. Just need to get back to some sort of normality. You mean to get home? I just don't feel ready. That's all. You know, I'm a bit nervous about being in the house on my own. That's understandable. But I've outstayed my welcome. No, you haven't. I like having you here. Look, why don't you take today off? Get a bit of peace and quiet. Oh, I can't. I've got paperwork to do. Well, you can do that here, can't you? Only just don't mope around the house while I'm gone, OK? OK, Mum. That isn't even vaguely funny. Dorica? Are you getting up in there? Dorica, you're not even dressed. Don't rush me. Other people are on their way to work. You'll never get a good job if you can't get up in the morning. I don't start college for another hour. That's not the point. You should be preparing for your lectures. If I'd had the chance to go to college when I was your age, I wouldn't have been lying in bed feeling sorry for myself. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. This is your mother you're talking to? I've seen how you've been since you finished with that Anil. It's got nothing to do with him. You don't want to waste your time in that family. There are plenty more fish in the sea. Mum! What's all this? I was feeling hungry, right? You're always hungry. What's the matter with you? Do you want to be the fattest girl on the street? <laughs> what? Don't look at me like that. Look in the mirror. If you get any fatter, we'll never find a nice boy for you. What? I'm your mother. If I can't tell you these things, who can? I'm only saying this because I'm worried about you. And it's what that Mrs. Gupta wants to see you fat and depressed. Don't give her the satisfaction. This has nothing to do with Mrs. Gupta. Hasn't it? You need to tidy up this room, Derika. It's a mess. Later, OK? I have to get to work. Promise me you'll get dressed. Of course. Dr. Denton or Dr. Brenton or something. Dr. Fenton? Yeah, probably. What? 
I haven't been here for ages. What's your name, please? Derricka. Derricka Shaw. Right. Fine. Could you tell me, is this Dr. Fenton a woman? Uh, no, he most certainly is not. <coughs> Only, I wanted to see a woman. Well, I, I'm afraid we've no female doctors available. Dr. Fenton is very easy to talk to. You'll be fine with him. Take a seat. Mrs. Gupta, 10.45. I had to park in your disabled space. I hope that's all right. Are you disabled? No. Then it's not all right. There weren't any spaces anywhere else. I'm afraid you'll have to park on the road like everyone else. Darika Shah? Darika? Mrs. Gupta. I believe you were going to move your car. I don't know what the matter with me is. I just don't feel well. Could you be more specific? Have you had any sickness or pain? Uh, no, not really. My throat's been a bit sore. OK, let's have a look at that then. Can you open wide for me? Thank you. Well, it doesn't look too bad. Is there anything else? Just general, you know. And how long have you been feeling unwell? Ages. Anything might have triggered it off? I've had a lot going on, you know. It's really stressed me out. Can I check you? OK. And what sort of things have caused you stress? Family things. My mum's been giving me grief. Well, your temperature seems fairly normal. Does that mean you can't give me anything? Uh, no, not really. Besides, in your condition... What? How many months are you? I'm not pregnant. Oh, I'm sorry. My mistake. I mean, do I look as if I am? I didn't mean to upset you. Look, please, sit down. The next time I want to see a female doctor. Miss Sharp, please, can we talk? Danica? Everything OK? Miss Sharp, please, come back. Oh, there. Shall I go after her? No, it's all right, Vivian, thanks. <coughs> Maybe I can help, Doctor. I know that girl. She's very badly mannered. Comes from a bad family. No, it's fine. Thank you. Hello, Mrs. Shah. How are you? Mrs. Gupta. Well, we don't normally see you in here. I normally shop at the supermarket down the road. Well, there's more choice. And it's better quality. Anyway, I only needed one or two bits, so I thought I'd stop off here instead. I'm uh, just on my way back from the doctor's. Nothing serious, I hope. Oh, no. Just a repeat prescription. I, uh, saw your daddy kind there. Oh, yes. Of course. She seemed quite upset. Really? I'm sure it was nothing. Didn't look like nothing. She came running out of the doctor's room and the doctor, he was chasing after her. She looked a bit flustered, you know. A bit red in the face. Don't know what was going on in his room. Probably some silly misunderstanding. That's £3.48. Let's hope so. But you never know, do you? These middle-aged doctors look not a young girls, even your Darika. Huh? It's all there. I counted it. I'm sure you have. Well, I will keep you. You've uh, obviously got a lot on your plate. Just what you want to know. About Darika? Huh? See you again. Everything all right? Oh, yes, of course. Why shouldn't it be? You seem in rather a hurry. Oh, just got a lot to do. I'm on an early break. Are you going to check on Darika? I know I would if you and my daughter. Yes, I, I suppose I'll see her at home now. If you'll excuse me, I need to rush or I'll miss my bus. Don't be silly. I'll give you a lift. Oh, but there's no need, Mrs. Gupta. Mira, please. Mira. I insist. Hop in. After all, what are neighbours for? Sorry to turn up unannounced. Um, we had a supervision session booked. 
Oh, sorry, I forgot. Is it that time? No, no, it's a good time. I'm just about to have some lunch with some soup on. Come in. This lady needs to see the doctor. We parked on the road. Do you have an appointment? I need to talk with Dr Fenton. Without an appointment? <coughs> it's an emergency. What sort of emergency? Could you tell him I'm here, at least? Dr Fenton, this lady says she needs to speak with you. It's about my daughter, Dorica. You saw her this morning, Doctor. Oh, she created a terrible scene. Ran out crying. You were chasing her, telling her to stop. I offered help. Mrs Gupta, by the way, a friend of the family. Uh, can I see you privately, Doctor? Of course. Uh, come this way. I did try to call your daughter afterwards, but I didn't get a response. It was the same for Hamza. Uh, thank you, Mira. I can take it from here. I'm just a bit worried, Doctor, because Tarika's not turned up at college this morning, and she's not at home either. And you were the last person who spoke to her. What did you say that upset her so much? Would you mind waiting in reception, Mira? Oh, I'm sorry. Surely you need me to be with you. Someone to be supportive. An extra pair of ears to hear what the doctor has to say. I can deal with it on my own. Thank you. You should really be talking to Dorica about this. She's not interested. She just shuts herself away in her room. She doesn't care what this is doing to the family. And having that woman out there gloating doesn't help. I'm sorry, I don't understand what your friend has to do with all this. Mira is not a friend. More of a nosy neighbour. Ah. It's more than that, Doctor. She said very unkind things about my Dorica. You know, not being good enough for her, Anil. She's trying to arrange a union with the girl she thinks is more suitable. <laughs> Honestly, he sells cars. What's so great about that? So, your neighbour is stopping Dorica seeing her son, and that's upsetting you? <laughs> I'm not upset by it. I don't want my daughter marrying into that family either. It's just everyone thinking that Dorica wasn't good enough for them that bothers me that our family isn't as good as their family. So how has Dorica taken it? You saw her. She's making herself ill. Lolloping around all day and eating, eating and eating. And now she's missing college. So she'll fall behind in her studies and for what? She'll have no job, no husband, and she'll be fat. Mira will have a field day. Forgive me for saying this, but you seem more concerned about your neighbor than you do about your daughter. Of course I'm concerned about Dorica. That's why I'm talking to you, Doctor. I'm worried about what's wrong. Well, I'm afraid I can't talk to you about what Dorica and I discussed. One minute, Dorica has a boyfriend. The next, the boyfriend's gone and she's binge eating. So what am I to do? Right then, we best get on with it. Okay. Look, um... George, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you doing this for me. I'm sure it's the last thing you want to be doing today. No, I was stuck here doing paperwork. You have saved me, so actually I should be thanking you. So, how are things? Um, pretty good, really. Right then, session over. That's lunch. <laughs> <laughs> I expect you want to get off home, Mira. What? Aren't you going to invite me into a cup of tea? Oh, I've taken too much time out of your day already. I know. Driving you around everywhere without a sip of water. And of course, I have to know that because, all right, I couldn't possibly leave until I know she's safe. Of course. Let's get the kettle on, shall we? Tarika, what's going on? I had a study period, so I came home early. She looks a bit peaky. What's she doing here? I thought your mother should know. No, what? I was hoping you might tell me. The doctor was most unhelpful. You went to the doctor's? What do you expect once we knew you weren't at college? Don't tell me you went to college too. I'll give you something for the petrol. Then you can go home. Now you know Drika's safe. So what's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. Did the doctor give you anything? It wasn't as bad as I was making out. Did you tell him how depressed you've been? And about your eating? I don't eat that much. You're just big boned, aren't you, dear? I said as much to Anya. I'm fine. Just go away and leave me alone. Rika, how can you behave like this in front of Mrs. Gupta? Is that all you care about?
about? What Miss Gupta thinks? I'm going upstairs. She's not normally like this. She's obviously not well. Maybe she's having a breakdown. I'll call the doctor. You better get off. I wouldn't leave you to time like this. That would be most unneighbourly. Hello? Uh, Dr Fenton, please. What's going on? Nothing. Only your mother said you were depressed. I'm fine. I don't know why she called you round. Well, it's obvious she had some cause for concern. Nothing's changed since this morning. Look, about that, I'm really sorry if I spoke out of turn. I just didn't know it was that obvious. So you are pregnant? Yeah. And your mother doesn't know? No. You're not going to tell her, are you? Not if you don't want me to. Do you think she'll be surprised? I mean, if I could see that you were pregnant, don't you think she might have looked at you and thought the same? She just thinks I've been eating a lot because I haven't got a boyfriend. So, the father of the baby... What about him? Does he know? We broke up. And I haven't even been able to talk to him. You ought to tell your mum. She's going to be so disappointed. Why? How would you react if you found out your daughter was pregnant? Well, I, I did, actually, and... Uh, I didn't react that well at the time. Well, then... But only because I was so worried for her. Worried no one would marry her. Worried she's mucked up her life. Worried what people would say. Maybe a bit of all those things. But, you know, it's a big adjustment for people. I take time to work things out, but I got there in the end. You're obviously different to my parents. My dad's going to go nuts. Look, I know it's difficult, but you're going to have to tell them sometime. Perhaps if I told my mum when you were there. She won't get so mad. I looked at him the other day and I thought, I wonder if that star will ever come back. <laughs> you want to watch out till you said that? Uh, is there a loo? Yeah, please? top of the stairs. Thank you. Hello. Hello. What's going on? Mum. I've got something to tell you. What is it? Don't be angry. But I'm pregnant. Mum. Mum, I'm sorry. Say something, please. I made tea. Just get out, can't you? No need to be rude. I thought everyone could do with a drink. Especially the doctor. Hamza, are you all right? She's had a bit of a shock, that's all. Pregnant. You're pregnant? Not her, me. That explains why you're getting so big anyway. My condolences, Hamza. Nobody's died. I'm so glad Anil saw sense when he did. How dare you? I've had enough of your snide remarks. You've never thought my Drika was good enough for your son. And this proves it. What are you talking about? Anil is the father. I did try to call you. Well, um, that's okay. I lost my mobile. Um, how are you? I'm um, okay. Well, that's good. Is this more than a flying visit? Oh, it's Brackens. Oh, are you coming to stay? That's exciting, isn't it? And that outfit, I think I've seen that outfit before, have I? I was hoping to talk to you about this before, obviously. But no, it's fine. It's good that you're here. Both of you. That seemed to make sense. How could you let your daughter do this? It's your son who's responsible. Is this how you've brought him up to treat girls? He's obviously been led astray by your Darika. Uh, she could 
see when she was on to a good thing. Are you saying she tried to trap him? Obviously too tempting. Gold digger, I think the phrase is. We live on the same road. We're not that different. Do I look like I have to work? You might soon. Now you'll have maintenance to pay. Wait for the blood test. Get over yourself, Grandma. I'm sorry, but she had that coming. That's not really the issue, though, is it? Ronnie, I just... Sorry, you go first. No, all I wanted to say was that I... I need to be able to... Daniel. Hey, Ronnie, good to see you. Well, you should have said you had company. Well, we're just doing a supervision session. Well, I won't interrupt. No, no, um... Come here, sweetheart. Maybe Uncle Daniel could take Bracken into the kitchen and find yeah. her a drink. Come on, darling. Let's go see what we can find, shall we? Thanks, Daniel. She's been driving me insane. Always acting superior, thinking she's better than the rest of us were. She's not better now, is she? Look, why don't you try and forget about your neighbour, just for the moment? <laughs> forget about her? How can I forget about her? You saw what she's like. OK, I'll try. I know it's been an eventful day, but surely Dorica is the one that you should focus on. She's upstairs, alone, pregnant. I can't believe that this has happened. Dorica told me she'd been a good girl. She lied to me. What was she thinking about? And not married? The shame of it. What are people going to say? Look, if you had to choose, what's more important? What the neighbours are thinking or how Dorica is feeling? Dorica, of course. Dorica. Look. I'm the last person to judge when it comes to dealing with children and handling bad news. I've been there and I've got the scars to prove it. But one thing I have learned is that you cannot plan everything in life. At some stage, you have to let your children make their own decisions, even if you disagree with them. Even if you think they're throwing away their chance to a decent life? Is that what you think? I just want the best for her then maybe Dorica just needs to hear that. A couple of weeks? Yes, I'm going to China. So you decided to take that job at Wendy's? Yeah, it seems to be a good opportunity to miss. Yeah, of course. And, well, it'll be nice for me to spend some time in Bracken. I thought it'd be better for her to be with her mother, unless your daughter being with you is going to cramp your style. Don't be like that, Ronnie. I've got to supervise Daniel for a while. And I was working from home today on some paperwork. That's why he came over. That's the only reason he's here. It's none of my business. Don't be like this, please. I don't want us to be like this. Neither do I, but what am I supposed to think? I'm going to say goodbye to Bracken. You should have told me about this sooner. Mum, I've been so scared. I know. What, what would Dad say? He's going to be so ashamed. You leave your father to me. All you need to know is we still love you. We're going to make sure everything is OK, whatever you decide. I want to make a go of it with Anil. Only if he wants to. And if his mother doesn't stop him. I won't let Mrs Gupta have her way on this one. It's what you want that's important. But you don't like Anil, do you? He seems like a good boy. I probably just need to get to know him a little better. It's his mother I don't like. How am I going to cope with her? Don't worry. Your father and I will sort her out. So you're not angry then? Shocked, yes. Angry, no. When I met your father, I was so happy. I'd been blessed to find this lovely man to marry me and give me children. All I've ever wanted is for you to have the same joy I've had. I'm not married, though, am I? But you're going to have a baby, Tarika. 
beautiful little baby. <laughs> You're going to be a grandmother. I know. I will be so proud. You sure you have to rush off? I'm afraid so. I've got a plane to catch. I'll, uh, I'll call when I get there. We can talk when you get back? Yeah, maybe. Doesn't have to be like this, you know. Doesn't it? Sure. I should have left, shouldn't I? They were hidden upstairs till he'd gone. Oh, don't be daft. Well, it probably didn't look great, did it? Well, better than if he'd found you skulking around upstairs. True. Still, sorry. Oh, don't say sorry. It's not your fault. It's just sod's law, isn't it? What's all this? I've had enough. I've got to get out of this place. So what's the least you can eat and still stay healthy? Oh, and because I haven't been paid yet, these must be my winnings. That's it. That's what you're thinking, isn't it? No. No, Mum. It has to be here. It has to be now. How dare you? You don't believe it, do you? Framed for murder, Dr Sloan's on the list of suspects next on BBC One. And later, Anne's Holden Court on The Weakest Link at 5.15.